Okay, we're at a beef operation now, and, and one of the things that typically is a, is a major difference is the flight zone of cattle, beef cattle, compared to dairy cattle. Now, this is going to be kind of a non-typical bunch of cattle. Uh, in the beef industry, most cattle get worked once or twice a year. These guys, because they're used for instructional purposes occasionally, get handled much more frequently than that, so their flight zone is probably going to be narrower. What you want to do is you watch cattle and as you approach them, their natural reaction is to move away from you. Well, they've got a gate obstacle on the far side. When cattle are relatively comfortable with you, they're going to turn their backs to you. And this is a little bit different than horses. As they start to get, um, you're within their comfort zone, they're going to turn towards you and decide how they're going to get away from you. Um, and it's different for everybody. Like cattle that only get moved, you know, or worked with humans twice a year, their flight zone is much longer. As they become more acclimated to being worked with people, their flight zone becomes narrower and narrower. So what they've gone is they've walked up this alleyway to get to a feed supplement tub. And again, some of these cattle within this group are 16 years old, which is very old even for beef cattle to make it that far. This is a much younger female. Um, you know, she was actually born this year, so she's less than a year old right now. But anyway, she's probably the least at ease with where we are right now, and so we're going to let some of them go past us, and the most calm of the bunch will be the ones that we can get the closest to before they move. But always keep that in mind. If you give them a wide zone, it's much harder to control them, but it lowers your risk. If this alleyway was half as wide as this and I walk towards them, they run out of possibilities as far as where they're going to go. If I want them to walk by, I can move to the side away from them. If they shift over to my right, as she just did, as they shift over to my right, um, if I move the opposite direction, then they're going to shoot by me. If I move in the direction that they're moving, I get in their comfort zone and they're going to turn the opposite way. So we're just going to go ahead and see, and as I said, this is kind of a non-typical bunch of cattle because they're really acclimated to being around people. Um, next week we'll work some on horseback to see kind of the final reaction. But if you can kind of follow me with that, this guy, right, as an example, very young calf born this fall, as I get into his comfort zone, he's going to move the opposite direction. Now, if I push him up into that area, he's going to start to look for an escape route. She's got to make a decision. If I want her to go that way and if I pull my photographer this way, when we get close enough, there's a big wide escape route for them and that's what they're going to shoot down. If I decide I don't want them walking that way, and as you see, they start to have reactions based upon comfort zone. The calves are less comfortable with limited space. The cows are much more comfortable because they've been around people forever. But if I want her to go past me and we give a, a big escape route this way, that's how she's going to go. If I've decided I don't want her moving that direction, okay, and I come towards her, she's going to turn away. Now, if my photographer moves this direction, these two girls are going to scoot by me, mother cow and her young calf are going to scoot by me going in that direction. Probably the, the one cow within this group that's been around humans the most, we could probably walk right up on her with almost no reaction at all. He wants to get away, cut this one back, okay, he's got an escape route going that way and he's going to go that direction. This mother cow, that was her calf that just shot out of here. And exactly as I told you, the oldest cow in the bunch that's been around people for the last 16 years is the most comfortable with allowing you inside her flight zone. But even with her, notice that she keeps her head towards us, not our butt. Okay? Horse is a little bit different. When they're uncomfortable with you, they'll turn their rear ends towards you. Cattle typically will turn to face you. Okay? And that also gives them the option of where they're going to blow out of here when they want to go by. The same group of cattle moving them back the other way. And these alleys would not be ideal for me if I was going to construct a facility because they're too wide. And often it takes too many people to get cattle moved down here. If they're going to fight you at all, you'd want the, the alley to be a little bit more narrow. Um, but anyway. Their natural response at this point after I got in their comfort zone is to walk away, and the walk away is this direction. Now, we've got an alley up at this part, and we're going to push them into that and then run just a few of them through the chute so you can kind of see their reaction. 
Sometimes you look for a cow that's a leader that'll be the first one through, and if she goes, everybody will follow her. They really do look for somebody, and once one of them makes the reaction to do what you want, followers are much more prevalent than a leader. Okay. What I've got, and Amber's positioned herself in the right, right spot. She's out of their line of vision, but she can, as we get closer, she can jump in with me and push these guys up into the circle tub and then into the squeeze. All righty, Miss Amber. Okay, we've got them secured in here. The circle tub forms up on that end. Uh, before we push them into that and keep them crowded up for very long where they start to get a little more agitated, I'm gonna climb back out of here and we'll go over the chute itself. And we're gonna go over three different chutes this morning and how each one of them works a little bit differently. This is probably one of the most common chute designs that's out there on the industry today and you find these over a tremendous amount of ranches. This one is portable, okay? and we can set this thing up on wheels if we need to move it. It's old, it's got a tremendous amount of miles on it, a tremendous amount of cows on it. And I, I brought people that knew what they were doing with me today because this chute is kind of on its last miles. Um, the teeth that actually do the head catching on them have a tremendous amount of wear and those can be replaced and those probably need to be replaced on that. But Tim's, you know, Tim's strong and stout enough that when he get, we get a head caught up in there, he can hold them um, so that we can do what we need to do. Okay, um, anyway, once you get him to make the jump and come through this side, he'll reel this in. It allows their head to be within this space right here, okay, confined within that. When it's time to release them, Tim pulls this handle forward and slides it out. Um, as I said, this is kind of a medium duty chute, it's got a lot of miles on it. Um, bulls will wear one of these out much quicker than cows and calves will. and the bottom part of the chute also can be drawn in to be narrower if you need to work calves in it instead of cows. You can narrow it up so they can't get themselves turned around as much. It's got some facility on this side that allows these to be pulled down where you need to do work on them. Okay, and so if you're going to do work on their heads, okay, you're going to go ahead and open. You'll go ahead and open this side right here that'll allow you facility to get to the neck region on the animal, okay. This part right here draws the top portion of this in. You got your hands on it, Tim? Yeah. Okay. And so we can pull this in this way, go the opposite, pull it back out. This releases it so we can open it up a little bit. And a lot of things you're gonna wanna do, maybe you're not gonna draw them up as tight as you want if you're gonna do preg checks or something else, but anyway, uh, once their heads are confined in there, the second thing that we want to do, and we'll probably have Amber do this once we've got a cow up inside, is put a bar behind them to squeeze them up so they can't back up as much as possible. Because then even if they got their heads out, if there's a bar behind them, it limits them being able to back up. Which is really important if you're doing a preg check and you've got a vet in there, or it's something else that you're doing if you're doing um, putting uterine boluses if you've got infections in them of some kind that you things that you need to need to address and deal with it's important that if you're behind them and they get their heads loose they're not going to come back and run over you really important in that regard so you've always got to have kind of an escape route planned uh, for the vet whoever's doing the work behind them if you've got work that has to be done underneath them and a couple of things that occur a couple of things that occur on this end This side gate right here can drop down, okay? There we go. The side gate can drop down. 
as an example, if you um, are collecting a bull to see if uh, he's fertile or you have to run a trichomoniasis test, it's important to have access underneath him. But again, what you want to do is have a pole that's behind them that blocks their ability to kick backwards. If you've got an animal that's in here that really has some issues with attitude and trying to keep a kick at you, you can always hobble them. But always, always keep close contact on the animal and what their behavior is trying to do to keep um, the animal as low stress as possible, but primarily also to keep you safe.